So I'm doing my regular routine of scouring the internet for another interesting real estate related topic to cover in my next video. And guys, we have been hit with quite possibly the weirdest and wildest architectural concept that has ever existed. A design firm now has come up with this idea for a floating skyscraper. A new skyscraper concept could bring people to astronomical new heights. The building would hover above the ground because it would be attached to an asteroid in space. It's going to be lightweight, solar powered and use water from the clouds the skyscraper would always be moving. Today we are talking about a project called the Analemma Tower, which is a proposed skyscraper that will stand as the tallest skyscraper on the planet, but it won't be standing on a traditional foundation down here on Earth. It will be suspended above the Earth hanging from an asteroid. If you're thinking that this is some sick April Fool's joke or that I've officially lost my mind, trust me, I thought the same thing at first. But this conceptual skyscraper is 100% legit. It was actually dreamed up a few years ago, but it's still getting talked about to this day. In today's episode, we're going to talk about how this insane idea came to be. We'll get into all the specs on the skyscraper and exactly how this hanging from an asteroid thing will work out. And of course, we'll dive into why this idea is absolutely ridiculous, but how it is technically still possible, assuming we have some advances in technology first. Okay, so this whole idea was conceived by a group called Clouds Architecture Office, or Clouds AO for short. And this company has no shortage of wild conceptual architectural ideas. Some of the ideas which have actually come to fruition and others like the Analemba Tower, which we're talking about today, being nothing more than a crazy concept. There's no about section on the Clouds AO website, but the partner section gives us a glimpse into the brains behind this company. We've got Astep Rudikovich being one of the founding partners who received a Master of Architecture degree from Harvard. And then there's Masayuki Sono, the other founding partner behind this 2010 company. Sono holds master degrees from the University of Washington Washington and Kobe University. These two are clearly a very unique duo and many of those jobs are listed on their website as speculative, meaning that there was never actually a client for the job or the concept was just impossible to pull off in the first place. Moving on to the star of today's show, Analemma Tower, we should start by watching a promotional bit from the Clouds AO website. Okay, so I just can't help but laugh at some of this imagery. I'm not trying to insult this architectural firm. I think that it's pretty cool that they're trying to be such visionaries, but this idea is just so wild. And I love how they're just trying to make this sound so normal. Like, yeah, let's just put an asteroid into orbit. Let's hang a long cord from it and then attach a skyscraper to that cord. And boom, you've just created the world's largest skyscraper. So it's pretty cool how they're showing how the tower is broken up into different sections. There's obviously going to be a living quarters, a working quarters, an area where you can eat and go to the gym and stuff like that. They're basically trying to create a completely self-sustainable community within this tower because it's gonna be kind of hard to get off this thing. So I love just how they casually drop that in there in the end that it can be accessible via flying drones, which don't even exist yet for people, 
But if you want to get off the thing and you don't want to use the drone, then, oh, you can just jump off of it and fly to the ground with a parachute. The architect's goal here are for one, to build the tallest building ever built, which in theory is more plausible if you dangle it from an asteroid versus build it on a traditional foundation here on Earth. And for two, they just want to create a more sustainable future for our planet because over a long period of time, the more roads and buildings and infrastructure that we build out here on Earth, the less space that we'll have and the less natural beauty we'll have. They say they want to build the skyscraper itself in Dubai before somehow launching it into space because Dubai has a cost of construction that is significantly cheaper than other places like New York City, for example. Plus, if you think about it, the people out in Dubai already have a really good understanding of how to build really tall skyscrapers. I mean, the Burj Khalifa built back in 2010 stands as the tallest building in the world to this day at almost 830 meters. Architects and engineers have been known to push the boundaries of what we thought was possible with every new project that they take on. Looking back again at the Burj Khalifa job as a perfect example of pushing the boundaries, that project broke seven world records when it was built. Breaking seven world records with a new skyscraper is pretty impressive, but building a skyscraper and then somehow tying it to an asteroid to float around Earth is on another level. They say that this could be constructed out of carbon fiber and aluminum, which will mean that this skyscraper might end up weighing much less than a traditional skyscraper, but I imagine it'll still be a near impossible task to get it up in the air after it's built in Dubai. I'm not even sure where to start on how impossible this feat will be to achieve at any point in the near future, but I guess we should start by talking about the asteroid. The the idea that the architects have here is that they just want to grab some asteroid out of the sky and then throw it into what's called a geosynchronous orbit. And these are just orbits that match the Earth's rotation. Talking about all of this is definitely out of my league, but these geosynchronous orbits are high Earth orbits at around 22,000 miles in the sky. And they're usually used with satellites that allow the satellites to match the Earth's orbit. And what's cool is that when a satellite is placed into one of these orbits, they'll align with the Earth's rotation period and they take about 24 hours to complete one rotation around the earth. So this just means that if they're trying to put this skyscraper up into one of these orbits that it will not only just be hanging from the sky 22,000 miles in the air but it's also going to be constantly moving hovering over different parts of the world all day every day. On the topic of how the heck these guys will redirect an asteroid it turns out that NASA has done some work trying to relocate asteroids in the past. One of their missions was called the DART mission, which was meant to slam a small rock into a large asteroid to slightly knock it off of its course. The issue here is that we clearly do not have the technology yet to just pluck an asteroid out of the sky and put it back in a different place wherever we want it. We hardly have the ability to knock an asteroid off of its course at this point. All right, so even if we are able to redirect an asteroid and then somehow tie this massive skyscraper to that asteroid and throw it into an orbit, what would it be like to actually live in this thing? Well, for one, it'll be traveling at around 300 miles per hour at any given time. And with it being suspended so high in the sky, it'll be about negative 35 degrees Fahrenheit temperature. This just means that it'll be pretty much impossible to go outside if you live in this building. So you better get really comfortable staying indoors. The power would come from solar panels. So they're covered for electricity and then water would come from clouds and rainwater. So at least you would have those modern amenities. And since you'll be so high in the sky and you'll be constantly moving, you'll be able to see the curvature of the earth from your bedroom windows and your view will always be changing. Speaking of the bedroom windows, the residences are supposed to be on the higher levels of this building, which creates a few additional problems. One is that you're not gonna be able to get big picture windows. The windows will all be way smaller, just like on an airplane. They can only go so big due to the pressure. And then the other issue about living in a skyscraper that's just floating around the world, what happens when a serious storm hits or a hurricane or something like that? I can think of plenty of places that I'd rather be stuck in during a crazy storm than a skyscraper floating around the earth, that's for sure. When one of the architects was asked about what inspired such a project, he said, since humans have emerged from caves, our buildings have been growing even taller and lighter. We believe that someday buildings will break free from Earth's surface, releasing us from harmful floods, earthquakes, and tsunamis. Analemma Tower is a speculative idea for how this might be achieved sometime in the future. Even though I think that I've made it clear that I think it's a little bit insane for this firm to have spent time conceiving an idea like this, 
this. I do have a lot of respect for them for thinking outside the box because this whole thing might seem nuts at first, but fast forward 50 or 100 years and it could totally be plausible. I imagine that at this point in the video, we probably have some architects or engineers or air traffic controllers who are totally cringing at this idea. If that's you, please let us know what you think down in the comments. I would love to hear what some of you guys have to say about this. Anyways, if you enjoyed the episode today, guys, hit that thumbs up button down below before you go. That really helps the channel out a lot and don't forget to click subscribe as well if you're not already a subscriber because I'm putting new videos just like this one out every week but that's all I've got for you this time thank you so much for watching and until next time see ya <laughs>